Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the European Crossover Webinar. And it is a very slow day, to say the least. I know we're coming into the Thanksgiving Day holiday, but this is very, very slow. Um, we've barely even moved anything at all, so it'll probably be a relatively quick session, um, considering that nothing has really moved very much. Taking a look at here at the euro, it's just we finally did back um, posted here about that 1448 being a key level and um, 1445. This got beyond where we have our um, our resistance for the day, but we've weakened a bit from here. Not a whole lot. They did try and make a push just above 70. Um, Nothing of any real significance other than we made it close to the 75. Actually, 14, 72 and a half. We've since pulled back. Yesterday, I thought they were going to make it right up to 68, and but they came up a little bit short. For myself, I was thinking, well, I think they may make it up there, but they came up a little bit short. But obviously, they did make it up here a little while ago, up into this 72 and a half, 73. Very quiet trading here in cable. And the dollar yen, we talked about that for this to rotate lower. Any moves back up here would be a good for those that had not been short. But we had talked about the significance of uh, 1368 last week um, when he was trying to pull back up. And that pretty much stopped the market dead in its tracks. You can see on the bounce back, here's that first dip that we had. We came back and uh, I'd referenced if to get, you know, exit out if you get this 1368. I think we made it up initially up to like 1365 a dip, but we did come back up here and test the uh, 1368 a few hours later. And from there, it's just been pretty much downhill. We were looking for rotation lower. I think we said our initial target was right around this 1250 something from we mentioned from last week. I think we'll still break. Eventually, we'll break 12, but uh, we've just dipped past below that, a little bit below. Um Dollar Swissy continues to weaken a bit here. Finally has come off. Dollar Cat has had its uh, dips here. We talked about um, selling opportunities against the 32. I don't know if anybody took advantage of that yesterday. We actually did get above 32. Got up to, I think it was 32.02, but remember we had Pointed that out even in the Asian analysis to sell 32 with a, a stop at 32.45, looking for a decent break. But we've had some dips in here. You're able to take advantage of that um, with this quiet trading. May want to, depending on how you want to play that, you could uh, take some quicker trades for 25 pips, maybe just a little bit more. Um, and then we saw crude oil yesterday, pointed out here that we had this support here. I think it was at 22, yeah, right, you can see right there. Actually, it's right there, 23. And it got as low as, what, 29. But anyway, I posted that in the chat room when crude oil was coming off. And look, and one of the things I pointed out was that the Canadian dollar wasn't reacting as if you would have expected crude heading towards the slow. So I thought that that was significant, and sure enough, the – we didn't get any further boost in the CAD, and we started rotating lower again. Eventually, I think crew will work its hot way up, but 
it's been beaten up so bad. It's been pretty tough for them. But in time, I think we'll make it up right there. Fifty nine twenty three, couple dollars lower, higher. But we're building a pretty good little area here. Gold did move a little bit higher with the uh, uh, dollar weakening. Twenty seven is at sixty one percent. And we did take out, so we got up as high as right there, 26.70. There we go. We may not get this dip down here. We're looking at, well, we'll see how that all plays out. But um, looking for a move, eventual move up here to 37 with a pause at 30. You can see the significance of this 30 coming across. The touch is right here and here. Good level right there. Here's our support that we had in our buy chart support, 95.93. Uh, we didn't quite make it. I mean, on this dip, we made it to 96.04. But that's our buy chart support from yesterday, a, put, uh, a dip that could take us. I think we had that list as our buy chart support here because uh, we talked about this 21, which is a 38%, but we thought they may you know, unleash – the crack it and really push a little bit lower, but um, we almost made it there. That that probably would have been a better make it there if we could have got the euro up to about let's say fourteen. Well, almost a fourteen ninety. If we made it fourteen ninety one, that would have coincided with uh, the cash dollar index making it down here to about ninety five ninety three. That came up a bit short from making it all the way down there. S&Ps continue to remain weak, which is giving that little extra juice for the yen as a safe haven. Actually, we could probably even be lower here with the yen if you think about it, considering how weak equities have been. And certainly that's taking its toll here with the, um, the, uh, the DAX. We did get German PPI today, now coming into the States. We do have uh, building permits and housing starts at 8.30 Eastern. And other than that, relatively quiet. Uh, we'll have API oil stocks later on today. That's at the end of the close. So fairly quiet. We did have German PPI. Came in a little bit weaker. And let's go and bring in the news here. I'm trying to find the, can't find the news. We have the Canadian dollar. Let me see, where the heck is that? Huh. 
We'll try and find that. There we go. Canadian dollar edge is lower as trade tensions weigh on risk assets. Canadian dollar edge lower against its U.S. counterpart on Monday, straying close to a nearly four-month low touch last week as trade tensions between the United States and China continue to weigh on investors' risk appetite. Deep divisions on trade between Washington and Beijing. There we go. We're evident at the Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit with leaders on Sunday failing to agree on a communique for the first time in their history. U.S. Vice President Mike Pence said in a blunt speech on Saturday that there would be no end to U.S. tariffs on $250 billion of Chinese goods until China changed its ways. The Canadian dollar is still very much leveraged to global demand, said uh, B. Pan Ra, North American head of FX strategy. If we see hostilities continue to rise between the United States and China, especially after next week's G20 meeting between Trump and Chairman Xi, um, then that would be something that weighs on global demand and by extension on currencies leveraged to global demand, including the Canadian dollar, Ray said. The Canadian dollar also came under pressure on Monday as worries about growing supply of crude weighed on the price of oil. Traders were also focused on this week's domestic event calendar, which features public appearances by Carolyn Wilkins, the senior deputy governor at the Bank of Canada, and Bank of Canada deputy governor Timothy Lane, ahead of CPI and retail sales due data due on Friday. Australian and New Zealand dollars fall from highs as risk appetite wanes. The Australian and New Zealand dollars came off highs on Tuesday as risk sentiment got a knock amid worries about global growth and worsening trade relationships between the United States and China. The Australian dollar was last at 72.84 after climbing to a two and a half month peak of 73.38. Remember, we were looking for a pullback to 72.40. It slipped half 10% overnight from its worst single-day performance since November the 12th. The losses came alongside a sell-off in global equity markets, with the main Wall Street indexes tumbling between 1.6 and 3% due to a cocktail of factors, including rattled investor confidence in the long, high-flying tech sector. The Aussie is often traded as a liquid proxy for global growth, as Australia's export-driven economy is largely dependent on world trade. The specter of escalation in the Sino U.S. tariff has weighed on the Aussie for much of the year. There are renewed concerns about U.S.-China trade tensions and a more generalized concerns over global growth, ANZ said a note to clients. The Reserve Bank of Australia, Governor Philip Lowe, singled out global trade protectionism as a significant risk to world growth. World growth in minutes released on Tuesday of the central bank's November 6th policy meeting. Trade relations between the world's two biggest economies seem to have worsened over the weekend when uh, Vice President Pence said a blunt speech there'll be no end to the tariffs. The domestic outlooks ro uh, appears rosier, though, with the RBA striking an upbeat tone as it flagged a possible pronounced decline in unemployment in the meeting uh, meetings of minutes. Still, there's no case for an increase in interest rates from the record low of 1.5% as a wage growth and consumer prices were still tepid. It seems clear from the text that the Reserve Bank, of Can uh, Reserve Bank Board is comfortable with how things have played out over 2018 and is comfortable with current interest rate settings, said Ryan Felsman. In a note, he said that while no change in the official cat rate, cash rate is expected until later in 2019, just like the Reserve Bank board members were closely watching trends in the job market and wages. Later in the day, RBA's low will give a talk in Melbourne titled Trust and Prosperity. In New Zealand, the Kiwi uh, was last up to 68.45, but lower than Friday 68.82, which was the highest since June. The New Zealand bonds rose a tad, sending yields about one basis point lower across the curve. Sterling slips on market sell-off and Brexit nerves. Well, the cable's trading relatively quiet. I don't know about slip, slip from where, slip from the highs, because it's trading relatively quiet. The pound fell uh, two tenths to 28.32, nearing a, the two week low of 27.25 reached last week. Its weakness was less than some of its peers as the euro fell four tenths against the Swiss franc. 
the Northern Irish Dem uh, Democratic Unionist Party, which props up British Prime Minister Theresa May's government, has said May ought to demand a better deal from the European Union on the terms of Britain's departure. Growing opposition to May's draft agreement has hit sterling hard in recent days, pulling it down nearly 3% from a November high, seventh high of 3176. Marks will focus on Bank of Governor Mark Carney's testimony to the Parliament where he might face questions on how the central bank responds to a no Brexit deal. No deal Brexit, I should say. While Carney has previously said the bank wouldn't necessarily respond to a no deal Brexit by cutting interest rates as it did after the referendum in 2016, he and his colleagues will likely get grilled on this point further, said uh, Marshall Gitler. Derivative markets paint a broad picture of caution with short-dated sterling risk reversals at their lowest level since July 2016, indicating investors were still expecting more pound weakness. And euro weakens as equity markets sell-off support safe havens. The euro fell from a two-week high on Tuesday as a sell-off in European stock markets and nervousness about Italian banks fed through to the currency. Earlier cautious comments overnight by Federal Reserve officials about global economic outlook, weak U.S. data, and a sell-off on Wall Street had knocked the dollar lower and supported the single currency. But the euro gave up its gains as European stocks fell. Italian banks hit a two-year low, and Italian bonds sold off again amid an ongoing confrontation with European Union over Rome's budget plans. It's largely sentiment-driven. European markets have opened weaker, and the Italian risk is still in the background. It said it doesn't help with the euro, said Alvin Tan. Developments in China, U.S. trade conflict, Brexit negotiations, and a sell-off on Wall Street rattled investors. With investors' nerves high, the safe haven Japanese yen included at a two-tenths to 12.33. Measured against a basket of its peers, the dollar index rose one-tenth to 96.29. The index fell uh, nearly half a percent, its biggest weekly drop since last September, as investors worry about slowing U.S. economic growth. Overnight, New York Fed President John Williams said, we will likely be raising interest rates somewhat, but it is really in the context of a very strong economy. Last week, Fed Chair Richard Clarito and Dallas uh, Fed President Kaplan raised concerns over a potential slowdown, leading the markets to bet the rate hike cycle is near an end, even as senior Fed officials signal more interest rate hikes, right, uh, rate increases. The Fed executive's remarks led some traders to wonder whether the dollar's rally was ending with the two 10-year uh, yields pulling back. Some analysts believe the dollar can stage a comeback, however. Williams' comments are justified, but not as dovish as the comments made by Clarita and Kaplan last week. The markets may rethink whether it read Friday's comments as overly dovish, which may lead to a reversal in dollar weakness, said Ray Trill. The dollar has also been weighed down by a weak housing data on Monday, which pushed down the U.S. 10-year bond yields. U.S. home builders' sentiment recorded steepest one-month drop in more than four years, suggesting that raising, rising borrowing costs are squeezing real estate markets. And on to Italy. The Italian government bond yields soar. Budget tensions weigh. Italian government bond yields jumped to a one-month high on Tuesday, pushed up by risk aversion on global markets triggered by sharp tech-led losses on Wall Street, tensions over Brexit, and concerns over the Italian budget. European stock markets opened in the red after poor overnight trading in Asian equities, leading to a broader move lower and higher quality European government bonds. The slump in global equity markets was led by sharp losses on Wall Street as technology firms tumble on worries about slackening, slackening demand. In addition to broader risk aversion, Italy's standoff with the European Union over its 2019 budget added upward pressure to Italian government bond yields, helping to push Italian bank stocks to a two-year low. The move pushed back the Italian-German 10-year gap to a one-month wide of 333 basis points. A solution with the European Commission over Italy's budget can be found, but the main measures contained must not be touched, says Deputy Prime Minister Luigi Di Maio. He added that Italy was paying the consequences of the EU being a stonewall over the budget. The comment made by Di Maio saying EU acting like a stonewall did not sound like compromise. In general, growing concerns about the response of the EU Commission, which is due tomorrow, said Daniel Lentz, rate strategist at DZ Bank. The Euro commit, uh, European Commission is due to present its feedback on Italy's revised budget plans for 2019 on Wednesday, and it's expected to respond negatively to the changes, which could pave the way for EU to launch an excessive debt procedure. 
Italian Treasury continues to offer four-year Italian bond to small domestic investors, but orders for the new bond on Monday totaled a lackluster $481 million. If locals are holding back, that's not a good sign, said ING Street rate strategist Martin Vandele. Budget concerns also kept upward pressure on Spanish government bonds. It appears that the Spain's minority government will be unable to pass the 2019 budget, and some reports mentioned the possibility of an early general elections in May of 2019, wrote Rabobank Bank analyst in a note. And lastly, with gold, gold steady and slow trading. Gold price was steady on Tuesday after moving in a tight range and holiday thin trading. The dollar index, which measures the greenback against the major currencies, was trading near a one-week low. Feds still expect to raise rates again. Higher interest rates will boost the dollar. Trade tensions remain heightened between the U.S. and China. All this is pretty much a redone of everything else. In the veiled criticism of Washington that further sours the tone of China-U.S. ties ahead of a G20, a top Chinese diplomat said Monday that the apex summit failure to agree on a communique resulted from certain countries excusing protectionism. Okay, well, let's go and get started now. Uh, be one moment. Try and Well, certainly it would look to be a bit difficult for the euro tomorrow. You've got a bigger risk. If you were to look at this from an overall perspective, the dollar index came pretty close. Let me see. Did we have that set up for that? I think we did. Yeah, we did. 95, 93. See that here on the cash dollar index? <clears throat> that was our bias chart support. And we can't. We didn't come that far away from it. We only made it to ninety six oh four, but I thought they might break it lower. Even though this is a thirty eight percent, thought they might push it down here. The point is that's a pretty decent support. <clears throat> and with the euro, obviously, if they, I don't think they're going to let Italy off the hook. I mean, yeah, that that stuff works. Is it usually it? You have to go a couple of rounds before somebody blinks, and. I think it's still going to, you know, it's, as they say, dark is before the dawn. Well, I don't think we're anywhere near close to that. So the risk is, is that, that um, they're going to come out with some harsh rebuke and maybe threaten whether they do or not the uh, those procedures against Italy. That's going to weigh concern. And we're already, we already have, the, they said, the Italian banks at a two-year low. So it's really open. I, you know, overall, I like the euro to go higher. And I've already mentioned that in the Asian analysis coming into Monday that it's turned back to bullish mode. But the risk going into uh, into Wednesday is that they come out with that communique and that's going to weigh. If anything else, the way to look at it is it's going to weigh on the upside. So really, if we were to make some dramatic move up here, people would use any moves up in this area to lighten those longs and say, you know, I'll come back after they get past all this Italian budget stuff in the very short term. So um, the concern would be that we'll, we'll dip back further. That being said, we'll look right here. You see that 1398 on a short term basis. I we still have this 1372. And if, um, you know, I think I'm going to keep this 1372 because I tell you what, if they do come up with that, <clears throat> if they come up with a scathing rebuke of Italy, and I don't see why they wouldn't, and they already have some concerns that we just saw that the the uh, Spanish minority may have some problems passing the 2019 budget. So 
Although I think the Euro <clears throat> technically is in good shape, it doesn't stop us from maybe yanking back down to this 1372. I think that'd be a heck of a buy area here. But coming into tomorrow, when they come out with those those comments, you could actually see this Euro get maybe you know kind of whacked a bit. We've seen it here, remember here, uh, all these big moves you see right here. Let's go back here. These moves here and here. are all Italian budget related. Every time the euro gets whacked, it's because, you know, like I remember this move right here, and the market was a little bit stretched. You can see technically you, you had this little bar here, almost like a gravestone doji. This is a gravestone doji, but generally you'd want to see that up near the push, upper portion here after you've made, you know, closer towards the top or at the end of a, a upward move. Well, we had already dipped. And, okay, you're looking for a little bit of a pullback. And I remember this had pulled here, and all of a sudden the wheels came off the caboose on more Italian budget woe news. So the market is going to be looking at that. Every time this stuff comes out, we have the potential to get whacked. So that's what I'm saying. Any moves back here are probably going to be – Probably tough for the euro to make that advance thinking, uh-oh, we maybe could be coming into to Wednesday and see another yank down. And I don't see why they wouldn't have, you know, pretty harsh words for uh, Italy. So that would pull us down here around that 1398, but then we could really send it sailing a little bit lower. So I'd go with this 1372, maybe almost right here. There you go, right there, 1368. Right there. So we're actually going to move it because of that Italian budget stuff. There's 1398 on a short-term basis. If you're if you're short and you're looking, you know, I want to take a little bit off here, there. Then you could take some off if you played the short side around 1398. But uh, I think there's that risk down here to this area. It may get as low as 1369. Um, we're actually going to go and move that lower here. Because every time something comes out with this Italy stuff, we get whacked on the euro. I mean, talking about technically, you know, right here. We already pointed that out. Here, I remember this one. And here, this one was, wow, they really, it was just barely pulling back and the market was just kind of holding its own. Then shh, the bottom came out. And I don't remember what news it was, but it, but I mean, it was Italian budget news related, but I mean, I don't know which which thing or maybe they they say we aren't going to change our mind about anything i think that was that one here of course then we had another one this one's italian budget news related so you know makes sense here 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 well why wouldn't you see another yank down which probably takes around this 1372 we'll move it down to 69 resistance on the short haul It's going to have a pretty tough time. I mean, they have to have some pretty tough news. We'll just call it right there. And I, that might even be a good stretch there for it to get that. I'm not even sure it could make it up there uh, unless we had some terrible dollar news. And I don't see that on the horizon. We only have housing starts. Well, you know, on the housing starts and building permits, that may be a bit negative, And that may allow the euro to rally. And probably, I'll tell you what, on the rally back, on if we do get some weak news on housing starts and building permits, that may uh, may allow some people to say, you know what, I think I'll take some of these longs off the table, and you know, in light of tomorrow coming into that that news for um, in regards to Italy. So let's see if the news comes out really kind of tough. Let's go with we'll go with fourteen sixty two. But that might be a bit of a stretch. I mean, we have to have some pretty bad dollar news, I think, for us to get up there. We'll see, though. We'll see. Uh, let's go and go to the cable.
And as I told you before, I didn't even do the agent analysis on this because I have no idea what this thing's going to do. It's just been all over the place. You know what I mean? And, and these moves have been big moves. Um, I think we just went with the with the the levels, and there's 29.37. Sure enough, we did. Um, and support, we're just going to right there go with this level here, 27.92. For right now, almost work like a trigger. That was in case it really came off 2747. But the, the 2792, basically going to treat it like a pivot. If it gets past there, then it opens the door for them to, to you know try and really push it lower. So once again, I'll go with this. Not once again, but we'll go with 2792 right there for support. It's a tough. That's a tough market. I'll tell you what, I wouldn't be trading for me myself. I've never traded cable all that well, and certainly I wouldn't be putting my. And you look at this. You might think this is a five minute bar or fifteen minute bar. These are two hour bars, and look at this. I mean, oh my goodness. I mean, it's unbelievable. You think about that. Look at look at this range here. These are two hour bars. So twenty eight forty five. What, like to about 20? You've traded in a 15 pip trading range for one, two, three, four. I mean, really, other than this little quick little pop up here <clears throat> to 75, you've traded in, in a 15 pip trading range for in this space here for about eight hours. And we haven't even dropped that much further. So, Let's go move into the Aussie. Well, since we're already on the Kiwi, we'll take a look here at the Kiwi. We had 6845, and we did make it up to six. Actually, we even got up above it. Things really doing very, very well. Here's a little gap here. Um, oh, and that's where they went to. Okay, you see this here? I was going to say, right there, the closing. And see how important these closes are? That's why I always go, that's why I always tell people, I don't care about the high and I don't care about the low because how many people bought uh, sold the high and how many people bought uh, bought the low? What matters is these closing bars here. So look, I went right here. You see that? And look, that's where the market stopped. 68, 69 and a half. You can put your trend line, you can put your highs and lows where you want but to me, it's all about the touches. And if you think about it, also, for those who do a lot of volume analysis, that's where the volume is. I, I mean, because how much volume was actually trading here at the very low? And how much was trading at the very high? Now, if they wanted to go all the way up and you said, I'm going to wait until it gets to this level right there, you would have missed it. But if you went just with the touches, the closest, look at that. Went right there, 68, right there. 68.70, and that's right where it ticked, and then it dropped back. Not a whole lot, but I'm just saying is it, that's where, to me, that's where it matters. It's the touches, these closing bars that mean everything, where volume is at, where support is at. Everybody, but like I said, there's many ways to trade the markets. There's like Blake likes to say, there's no right, there's no wrong way, but I'm just saying what works best for me. Um, so the, the resistance is going to be right there. You see that? Right down that touch. 68, 69 and a half. We'll just call it 68, 69. The market made it up to 68, 70. Support. Oh, this thing is really held up very, very well. Actually, you're even surprised in light of um, all this business with U.S. and China. Well, this thing's had a pretty good run. I think for starters, we have to come down here. We've just gone a little bit too far. And support's going to come in about 100 pips away before it's all said and done. Especially if equities get worse, they might start to weigh and 
on this. Boy, look at gold. Gold's made up to 12, 1227. Look, that's a 61% of this move of 1197 to 1246. Like I said before, I like 1237 here. I thought they might give us a great opportunity down here, but they haven't. <clears throat> Let's go move back in. Let's move down to the uh, Aussie dollar. So we were looking for a move down here to 72.40. That's what we had in mind. Uh, <clears throat> it stopped before that, maybe to 72.51. But this is where I think they'll step in to start to go on and, and defend this. So we did see a little pullback here. Resistance in this case is going to be right there. You see right there that closing bar going back to exactly what I said before. You see, after we get this dip, you come back up. And there's the close right there, 73. So it's going to be 73 cents for right now. And you see how the market came here to 73, stopped on a dime. The market came here to what was it, 72.98? Actually, 73.2 also. You see that right there? Going with that closing touch right there, 73. It's actually 73 and half of a pip, but we'll call it 73. Support, well, we're going to stick with the 7240. No changes there. Next up, dollar CAD. We already talked about the dollar CAD. We were talking about um, selling uh, 32. And if you saw that, <clears throat> if you didn't get a chance, we you still had the opportunity. Remember, they bounced up when crew was making those lows. And if you look on here, we were selling, we're selling um, 32. It got right there to 32.02. And then, look, we turned around and went went for a pretty decent amount. You could have caught yourself almost 50 pips. Still looking for much lower. But like I said, it's quiet trading. You had an opportunity to, to dance around for, you know, 15, 20, maybe 25 pips. Still think we're going to go lower when you think about how far crude has fallen. And crude has completely fallen out of the bed. And we spent a lot of time yesterday talking about that. The break of 71, and I was looking for 64, and they did kind of hold their own at 64, then they rotated lower. And I just think that eventually we'll start to even ourselves up, and this will probably weigh on the dollar CAD. And so we're looking for a bigger move. But once again, 32 stop at 32.45 on a two-hour close, and that's working out okay. You could jump in. Once again, with the holiday trade, maybe if you've taken the trade, you thinking, well, you know, I'll take 25 pips and, and go home for now. Um, but no changes there in the dollar CAD. But that's the reasoning behind that on this crude oil. Um <clears throat> Going to dollar Swiss. This one's finally starting to pull back. We had 99.53, which is a good level. <clears throat> that 53, but we've since broken lower. And we're staying lower. Moment. So let's take a look at a fib, see if we can see anything. Well, we just about made it to the 38%. Do you see that? 9906. Right there. Well, this entire move here comes in at 99.06. And we'll put our support here if they want to break a little bit lower. 98.96. 
as I told you uh, yesterday, <clears throat> the dollar squishy isn't what it used to be. It used to be a great canary in the coal mine. It would, you know, d- suggest moves of the dollar. And it certainly broke out early in um, spring and actually led, I like to say, led the dollar out of the woods and move, and signaled this move higher. Since then, the dollar index, uh, the dollar squishy has just done its own thing. While the dollar squishy wallowed, Throughout all of uh, the summer, the dollar index have gone higher, and there's been times when the dollar index has fallen. The dollar Swiss was just doing its own thing. So I would not use that. Other than if you're just trading it, I certainly wouldn't use it as any type of barometer for the dollar index in any respect whatsoever. Um, resistance for right now is going to be right there, 99.62. You can see it right here. Right there, you see it? And just we'll go with this notch just above there. And there it is there. Come on, 9963. And now we'd have to change this to range for now. Going to the uh, the dollar yen, we have twelve forty. <sighs> not bad, not bad at all. Look, not bad at all. Twelve forty, and we did make it down here twelve thirty two. We talked about this, and it's just a, how funny how markets can change. Remember how the dollar yen wouldn't go down, wouldn't go down. So my thought was, and we did the analysis from two weeks back. It, it was. It would not be happy until it what I called "quote unquote" resolved itself to 13.89, and uh, we did make it up here. We even had that as a level at the time. It's right there, and we actually even pushed it further up here to 14.22, and we actually uh, afterwards used that as a resistance because I didn't think they'd take out 14.22. We figured that they would just sit around here for a while before they made their next move. And I really didn't see the case where they could go higher, so I thought we'd eventually rotate lower. And I said it reminded me of the move earlier in the in the summer where we saw a really big hard break. I didn't expect that kind of break because in that move we saw 300 pips in three days or two and a half days. But I still thought that we'd make it down to 1255 on the first initial move. Well, we did that, and we actually got down here actually at 30, but our support was 40. But I think eventually we'll take out 112, maybe not by a whole lot but take out 112 before we see a more significant bounce. And you'll see some support right there at 1194. For right now, we did say 1240. We'll give a little bit of extra room for right now. We'll go 1221, maybe juice it just a little bit lower. We'll say 1217, call it 1216. 1216, but uh, we're pretty stretched here, but we'll go 1216. I think eventually, I mean, I think we'll probably find some buyers in that area or maybe even before then. But I think eventually the market will make it to um, 1193 before we see a more uh, uh, significant bounce. Although I think this market can still move lower. I'm surprised it's still doing this well considering how equities have been. It's 1216, and on the upside, at this point now, it's just going to be 1293. You're realistic. You could take a look right here. You see here this grouping of touches. Told you four right here. You see this? See all that? You can even go right there, but we'll give it a little bit of extra room, which would be right there. 1285. That's probably as good as it gets, but we'll give it we'll give it a benefit of a doubt if they get stretched a little bit. So we'll go 1293. <laughs> And let's go in here to the cash dollar index. Well, no change there. I still like 95.93. Actually, we're starting to see how we're starting to work hard. Let's see where the euro is. See, the euro is now, now dipping down to 14.20. I think this really has a lot to do more with, um, you know, that Italian situation. I mean, I think they're going to give them a stinging rebuke tomorrow. 
I mean, you know, you first you shoot the first salvo, and um, that's going to pretty close to the bow, and I think that's exactly what's going to happen there. And so I think the markets are factoring that. So if you get, um, let's say, a week building permits and housing starts number, and the dollar comes off and the euro pops up, I think they'll be using that that pop to exit longs in advance of you know what probably might be a, a stinging rebuke tomorrow and put some pretty good pressure on the euro. That be tomorrow. Um, so the dollar index, 95.93. We talked about 96.19. That was a key daily, and we actually closed below that. So we've already taken that out. Remember that coincided with 96.21, the um, 38%. But I didn't think that that was necessarily going to hold it. I thought we'd stay weaker on why yesterday I had that 95.93. The dollar index held out okay yesterday. But like I said, this would have been a good area right there, which would have equated to the euro getting up to 14.91 if we got to 95.93. Uh, as far as resistance, for right now, there it is. Once again, the same old song and dance, the touches. And so, right here, see that? 96.55. Just going with the touches. You see, we close here. Because then you can push this little thing and they can goose some stops up here. But what counts is these closes. So that's 55. And then you see that rotation lower. Now, one thing you do have to be cautious about is as we get into uh, Thanksgiving um, here in the States, uh, Blake may go on and mention that on the FACE webinar. We've seen some of the biggest moves you'll see in on Thanksgiving. We didn't have a big move last Thanksgiving, but I think it was like two or three Thanksgiving days ago. I mean, years ago. I think it might have been four Thanksgivings. We had like a 300 pip move in the euro. It was either three Thanksgivings ago, might have been four, but you do see some pretty good moves here in the in uh, FX. I guess because they think it's thin activity and they can push the market around. So uh, one of the things you want to do is be cautious. Um, probably lighten up your lighten up your positions um, because, like I said, we do see some <clears throat> from time to time, not always. But we do see some pretty good significant moves. It's really, it's very thin. And boy, like I said, I think it's about four years ago or something. They pushed the euro for about 300 pips or so. But Blake might make a mention about that. But you see some pretty big moves from time to time uh, on uh, Thanksgiving Day. So be aware of that. Mm, let's see. Dollar still bearish. We're going to move into gold. Going to be able to... <clears throat> Finish today a little bit early and give Dale a little bit of extra room <clears throat> to get prepared. Since we're trading relatively quiet. Looking at gold, I thought we might get a chance. Maybe we can um, load the boat at 12.14, but so far that's not to be. We had 12.24 because I thought we'd probably start to eventually rotate lower, which we did come to that 12.19. Thought you can see right here you get this little gravestone doji here. Certainly that offered a little bit of um, downside, which we did get that, not a whole lot. But once again, we're very quiet trading. But 1227 is a 61% kind of pairing back a bit from there. Um, at least for today, we'll, we'll go with that. Let's see. Let's just see. Just to be seeing. Are there any touches here? Yeah, we'll go with 1227 for the resistance. So just a dollar away from that. Support for right now, it's just going to be there twelve twenty one.
but it's certainly in an up mode, <clears throat> and we think eventually it'll resolve itself or eventually get up to 1237 with a pause of 1230. We're weakening a bit from that 61%. You can see that here. Go up to 2720. Pulling back just a bit. And let's go to 30-year bond. Boy, we are going on the bid here. But the reason is, is because of equities. So I thought we'd probably taper off and get a little bit of a pullback. Yesterday, we had 38.24 with a high of 39.25. <clears throat> We're getting that little bit of extra juice here. And we did pair back. But thing is, is that with these equities selling off, um, people, are, I think, it's not so much I think they love the bonds. It's that they want the protection. And need that move that money there. So you can see right here. I just don't know how much for the pressure. Resistance will actually come in right there. That's still a long ways off. But well, not a long, long ways off, but it would be right there. You see right here? And that's coinciding right there. You see that 4015. So we'll go with that. A bit of a stretch, but equities of you may see this continue to weigh. Also, if we come in with the weaker housing starts, that might even weigh on it too. Housing starts, building permits. Um, support. Right there. 39, 15. On to the boon. Well, we've got some bids on the boon because of the whole Italian situation. And we have Italian banks on their lows, two-year lows. We're just going to go with the technicals. See that right here? That's where I'm coming up with 6104. So we'll go with the technicals on that. For right now, we're going to have to turn this to bullish on the bonds because of what, I mean, we've already broken past this. We've already come off this. Broken this will be a, be a downtrend. And we're still pushing a little bit higher, so we'd have to change that mode to bullish. And lastly, we'll finish up with the DAX. Under quite a bit of pressure with this whole Italy business. All we can just go is right there with the technical right there. And that's going to be uh, 11052. <clears throat> it's going to have a tough time, I think, getting beyond here. Let's go right there, give a little, just a little bit of extra, which is going to be 11. Oh, God, I don't even know if I can make it. Well, right here, right there, 11,266. But with this Italian news to come out, it certainly doesn't look like there's an appetite to buy.
Okay, and there's the bias chart, and we're able to finish a little bit early, and um, we'll go on and post this in the chat room. And thanks for joining us here on the European Crossover.